Hi guys, uh, welcome to the introduction to Fusion 366. Uh, can everyone hear me? And see me? I just need someone to tell me yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so for for this introduction, and thank you, thank you for that. Um, we are going to go over a couple of things in Fusion 360, like knowing the interface. And and then we're going to do two activities, which we are going to design a Lego brick and we're going to create a glass bottle. Um, by creating the Lego brick, you'll be able to learn the basics of 2D sketch, uh, extruding, how to do shells that is making hollow something, um, and use the rectangular pattern. The rectangular pattern is very useful if you want to to use the same, to repeat the same design or the same component in, in one piece. Um, so my name is Daniel, by the way. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know and, and we can just go through them. Um, the other tutorial that we, that we will do is create the glass bottle. And with the glass bottle, uh, you guys are going to learn how to put uh, a reference image in Fusion 360 so that you can work with it. Um, we're going to learn about fit point splines, the revolved feature, and we'll go very quick to how to create a render in, in Fusion. Um, if you I don't know if you guys all have Fusion right now. Uh, I don't expect you to like, be working uh, on your Fusion while I'm talking because that can be a little, um, you know, hard hard to do. And if you don't have Fusion 360 yet, I I suggest uh, right now for doing giving uh, the Fusion 360 for free, so you can go to Autodesk. Uh, dot com and you can register with your Purdue account and you'll be able to download the student version of Fusion 360. Um, again, I don't think that I said it, but this is being recorded. So at the end, you will be able to access this uh, class and you can go over as many times as you, as you want to if you want to create this in, in Fusion later. Um, so let's start just with knowing the interface for, for Fusion 360. Um, this is the interface that you're going to find. Uh, either you have a Mac or, a, or Microsoft, it's going to be the same interface, which is cool. Um, so we're just going to learn all the parts first. That way it's easier to, to navigate. Um, so the first is going to be the application bar, which we have over here on the top. And you'll be able to access the data panel uh, that we will talk later in, in the second option. Um, you have the file menu where you can create a new project. Um, you can save and you have other options that you can find there, like export and even share your designs if you want to. Uh, we have the save option. Um, you can see the project that you are working on. If you name it, well, it's going to show up over here. You're going to have different tabs, which will allow you to work in different projects at the same time. And of course, you're going to have the undo and redo button because they're very important. Um, the second thing is going to be the data panel. And in the data panel over here on the left, you'll be able to, to find all your design files. So if you create a folder and you put your designs in a folder, this is where you are going to be able to find them. Uh, and any piece that, that you create, you're going to find it in the design panel, uh, in the data panel. Um, we have number three, your profile and help. Uh, your profile is a, a direct communication between your Autodesk account and Fusion 360. 
So you'll be able to find all, all your data there. If you are working in a team, this is where you log in and you are able to share things with your team or work in a team's project. Uh, remember that you can use uh, Fusion 360 to work with, with other people, which make it cool because uh, everybody can uh, collaborate just to create the design and you can see their progress. Um, then we have all the toolbar where you're going to find, of course, all the tools for Fusion. Uh, you'll be able to find the sketch, which will allow you to create 2D um, like drawing. Uh, you'll be able to extrude and uh, work with surfaces. Uh, this is where you're going to find all the tools. Um, and number five, browser. In the browser, you're going to find um, the list of all the objects that, that you are creating in the design that you are working on. So this is where you're going to find all of those pieces. Um, number six. Number six is the view cube. And this is going to help you to explore all the faces or any perspective from your design so you can just just click on it and and it's actually very easy to, to navigate you can change you can go to the top view or to the front view uh, very easy and this is going to help you just to, to navigate or, or see all the views from your design. Um, we have the canvas that is here in the center that's probably the most important part because it's where you have your design, you create all the uh, two, 2D drawings over here. Uh, this is where you're going to see your design and all the things that are happening to your design. This is your space to work. Uh, we have navigation bar number eight and the display settings. Here you can decide if, if you prefer to have the whole screen uh, but divide it in in four different views from side, um, top, and perspective. If you want to work that way, this is the part where you're going to find it over here, the options. Uh, you have the zoom in and zoom out, and you have this little hand that will help you uh, also navigate or move things in, in the workspace. And the last thing is the timeline. And the timeline is also very important because it lists all the operations that you have done in your design and and you can keep track of those uh, of those operations and if you need to go back to one of them you can always look for it in your timeline and just go back to those operations um this is just something that you need to know that way it's easier for you to to work with with fusion and I would say just let's go right ahead and, and jump to create the, the Lego brick uh, because you'll be able to understand more about the whole interface and, and all the tools that, that you can use in Fusion. Let me see. Let me share my screen. So how many of you have used um, Fusion before? I've played around with it a little bit. Okay. I, I believe Fusion is is pretty easy to use. Um, I'm, I'm also new in Fusion. I started using it last year. And it's pretty easy to, to understand. And if you use tutorials, um, the tutorials are, are great. And they just do so many things. Um, so I also recommend that if, if you want to learn more about Fusion, just to, to watch different tutorials. Uh, even YouTube, uh, they have very good tutorials that, that will help you understand more. Um, what I'm giving you today is just the introduction, so it's just the start of Fusion. Um, so let's share my screen. Okay, I hope that you can see all my. My screen for Fusion. 
and let's go right ahead and and start working on on the Lego brick. Uh, just like we talked before, um, just by creating this Lego brick, you'll be able to to learn how to do the 2D sketch um, to extrude the 2D sketch and make it a three-dimensional model. Uh, we're going to use the shell option just to make a uh, hollow our brick. And we're going to use the, the rectangular pattern that is just to, to repeat the same shape around our design. So one thing that I recommend always is if you are working on Fusion, to to change your unit. So if you go to document settings and and if you are working with inches, I I know that it's easier to to understand um, inches than centimeters or millimeters. But I recommend to use millimeters all the time. But you are using uh, Fusion or any 3D model uh, program because it's easier. Um, if you need to print something in a 3D printer, uh, you don't need to change anything. You just need to export your your model, and you won't have any trouble. Uh, if you are working with inches, you will need to to make the change of any of your objects to millimeters so that you can print with them. And so I recommend to to just use uh, millimeters. I think that will make your just your life easier. So we're gonna start by creating a, a new component. Uh, so we can go to assemble a new component. Uh, the components are are important. This it, it helps to organize all like your files in that design. Let's say that you are working on a bike and a bike has so many parts. So by creating components, you are giving folders to each of those parts of the bike. So it's easy to work uh, that way. If you need to go back to one component, you already know that uh, that's the component that you need to work on. So if you organize your components before, that's going to make your, your life also easy or easier. Uh, so for this component, we're just going to call it Lego. Uh, we need to be sure that the component is set in standard and that this active is, well, is active. Okay. Uh, now we're going to start creating a, a sketch, a 2D sketch. Um, we're going to go to create and create the sketch. You're going to need to choose a, a plane to work or a face. Uh, if you know already how to use these three, I would recommend just to click in one, com in one of them and, and start working. Uh, but if you find it a little confusing, you can always use uh, the box. It's, it's pretty easy to, to use. If you just want to go to the top, we're going to be working on the top. So you just click on the top. It will take you to the top view, and you just click on, on this face. So we're going to click here, so that's the plane, and we're going to be using the two-point rectangle to start with our Lego brick. So you click on the two-point rectangle, and we are going to start from, from the center of, of our face. So we click on the center of the origin, and we are going to drag, we're going to keep uh, our mouse press, and we're going to drag a little bit to the side. And you'll be able to, to write the dimensions that you want for this uh, rectangle. So here on the left, for the width, we're going to write 15.8. And we're going to press the tab key on our keyboard just to lock that dimension. And for the land, we're going to write 31.8. And we're going to click again. We're going to press that just to lock the dimension. Um, 
now you see that you can you can select where you want to to leave that rectangle uh, so you decide if you want it in this side uh, you just choose we're gonna just click outside of the rectangle over here because I want it in this area so you click and and it's complete if you need to change any of these measurements, first you need to press the escape key. That's kind of like the finish command. So it takes you out of, of your rectangle. And if you double click, you are able to change any of these dimensions. So if you actually wanted 18, you can just change it for 18 and press enter and it will change uh, all, all of those dimensions very easy. Let me change it to 15.8, because that's what we need. Okay. Um, now, with the rectangular done, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is to create the solid. Uh, to create the solid, we're going to need the command extrude, and you can do it using your keyboard by pressing the letter E for extrude. Or you can come here to solid, create, and through it. Uh, it's going to tell you to choose your profile. In this case, it's already selected. But if it's not selected, you need to click on profile. And it will select the area that you want to extrude. For this instruction, you are going to write uh, 9.6. That's going to give us the height. And enter. So if we use our view cube and we click on home, it's going to show us that we have the instruction over here that we want it for 9.6 millimeters. Um, so after after this, we need to create the bumps for for our Lego brick. So the Lego brick has a bump. To create those bumps, we're gonna need again. Uh, we need to select create. We're gonna select sketch. We need to choose a plane. So in this case, it's gonna be the top of, of our instruction. And Fusion automatically will take you to to that view, to that sub view and to that plane. Which is cool because it saves you a lot of time. Um, now we're gonna select circle, the center diameter circle. And we're gonna start creating a circle inside of that face and we're going to give it a, a diameter so the diameter of our circle is going to be five millimeters and again we're going to press tab to lock that dimension and then press enter so we have the circle now but we don't know if the circle is in the right position so to choose the position of this circle, we're going to need to to move the circle. And to move the circle, uh, we can just press, again, using the keyboard is very easy. If you press the letter D in your keyboard, D is for dimension. You can also find that over here. You, you'll be able to move the circle and put it in uh, with the dimensions that you want. So let's click on the middle of the circle and that center and this edge of our rectangle. So you are going to see that it's giving us uh, a distance and we're going to change the distance. So we come this way, we click and we're going to change the distance for 3.9 and then press enter. And that's going to place our circle 
and, and that distance that that we gave. We're gonna do the same thing again. So let's press the center of the circle. And now we're gonna choose this edge. And again, 3.9. Okay, now we have our circle in the place that we want it. Now we need to give a thickness to this circle to create that bump for, for our Lego. So to do this, first we're gonna create, um, we're gonna press escape so that we finish with everything that we're doing. And you decide, again, you can press on your keyboard the letter E for instruction, or you can just go to solid and solid create an instruction. But if you press the letter E, it's gonna take you right away to, to the extrude mode. Uh, you're gonna need to select the profile. The profile in this case is gonna be our circle. And it's gonna tell you to write the distance that you want to extrude that circle or the thickness. So for this bump, it's gonna be 1.7. If you are happy with it, you just click enter and you have your first bump of your Lego. And now this is something cool. Uh, using the, the rectangular pattern, uh, you won't need to create all the other circles, all, all the other bumps over here, but you can just repeat this same bump all over your, your Lego brick. Um, so to do that, we are gonna go to create, and we're gonna click on pattern, which is over here, and rectangular pattern. So for the rectangular pattern, there first is gonna tell tell us to select. Well, for the pattern time, we need to change it to features because we are gonna be using a uh, a solid. So we need to change that one. Uh, and then for objects, now we select uh, our instruction over here, the bump that we created before. Okay, for, we need to click on directions over here and select. And we we'll use this edge of, of our rectangle. So, so that it, it has a, like a guide uh, for the things that we are creating. So we're gonna click on that edge and we need four of these bumps. So we're gonna change here four and this is the distance between the bumps. So for this distance, we're gonna click uh, 24. When we change that, we can see where all of those uh, instructions are gonna be and if they look good, well, you can click OK if you want to, but we are missing the other side. So to do the other side, we already have this side done. So to do the other side, we'll go here and we'll change the direction. So we'll click on this arrow. Yep, we'll click on that arrow. And we are going to change, again, quantity because it's this one over here is one and this one is two. So two for quantity and a distance of eight millimeters. Okay, now I think that everything looks good. So if you are completely happy with it, uh, you just click OK. And you already have all the bumps for, for our Lego brick which is exciting because you save so much time that just uh, making one and then repeating the other ones. So this is a very cool tool that, that you should have present in your, uh, for your future design. Um, so we are not done yet because we need to create uh, the shell or the hollow on the bottom of this Lego brick. So let's go and do that. So here in our in our view cube, we can click 
I'll be over here, and that's going to show us the bottom uh, for Lego brick. Um, to hollow this, we'll go to modify, and in modify, we're going to find the option shell. And the shell is just going to remove that paste or that material from our, from our Lego brick. So we're going to click on shell. And we need to select the face or the body that we want to extrude. And in this case, is our this button face. So we are going to click on that button face. And we need to get a thickness to it. Uh, so for this Lego, it's 1.49. And we're able to see that thickness before we complete the the shell. So if you are not sure and you want to change it, um, you can do it before you click OK. But so right now, that's the right thickness. So if you're happy with it, you just click OK. And we already have a hollow brick. So we are almost done with this. Um, the last thing that we need to do is to create all the the columns that are three columns that were here in all Legos that helps every Lego uh, to snap into one another. So we're gonna create those three uh, those three columns that were there. So we're gonna select the inside, so this face that we're gonna be working on, and with the right click. We can, if we click right click, we're going to have all of these functions, functions, and we can select create sketch. When we click on create sketch, it's going to take us automatically to that same page that we're going to work. Um, and that's the statement of thing. So we need to create a line first. And for that line, we're going to use the key in our keyboard L to create the line. And in a sketch palette, we're going to use the function construction. When we activate the construction function, uh, these are like construction lines. So you are actually, it's just a reference. You are not really using them. It's just to, to help you. Um, put things in your in your design or, or locate them in the right place. So you go to line, click construction, and we're gonna make a construction line from this point to this one. Okay. If you're happy with that, just click escape. We just need that line, and if you can. See if we let's let's click on or let's use our circle function um, and to take that circle function again you can click or you can press the C on your keyboard or you can just come here and and click on the center diameter circle. Uh, but by clicking or by pressing the C, it's just easier. Um, and then we're going to find the middle between those two points. And you know that is the middle because it's going to have uh, a small triangle that, that is telling you that's the middle. So we're going to click over there to create a circle. And we are going to have for that circle a dimension of 6.314. And we're going to click enter. Oh, but I forgot one thing. I forgot to disable the function, the construction function. All right. But you can do it later, just like I did if, if you need to. So we have this circle already. And we need to create an offset for this circle. Uh, in your keyboard, 
you can press the letter O for offset. So I'm gonna just click letter O for offset. And you're gonna select the curve that you're gonna be using for the offset. Uh, one millimeter, that's, that's the measurement that we need. But as you can see, this is gonna create an offset in the outside, and we need the offset in the inside of our circle. So when we click, or when we press the letter O, we're gonna have this panel over here. And this panel is gonna allow you to flip that offset. It can be inside or it can be outside, depending on how you need it. We need the offset inside, so we're gonna keep it inside and we're gonna click OK. Again, this for some reason is still in a construction. Uh, I just deactiv deactivated it. Um, and now you have your two circles and we need to extrude this to create a column. So we are gonna click our Click on solid, create an extrude. It's gonna ask us to select the profile. This is gonna be your profile. So we select that profile and we give a distance. So a distance for this column is gonna be 8.1 and enter. So as you can see, we have our column over here. Uh, but we are missing two of them on this side. And to create those two, we're gonna use again our tool, a rectangular pattern tool. And that's it. So create pattern and rectangular pattern. We need to be sure that it's in features, which is this. Then select the object. We're gonna select that object, select the direction. So we're gonna click on direction, and we are gonna select this edge of, of our rectangle. So we select that edge, and they're gonna ask us again for the quantity that we want and the distance between them. So this is already in the place that we want it because we want it this way, not that way. So that's already there. We need three of them and the distance is gonna be uh, 15 millimeters between them. If everything is cool, uh, you click enter or click okay. So you feel more comfortable. And right now we have our our Lego break in an overall complete, but in it some detail. So most of these, they they like to to give the edges or to smooth those edges. So let's do that because that makes it look better. It makes it look more like a Lego break. Um, and to do that, we're gonna need our tool that is the the fillet tool. So we're gonna go to modify. And in modify, uh, we have the fillet tool over here. And the fillet tool is gonna get rid of all of those sharp edges. So let's click on fillet tool. And we are gonna select all the edges that we want to smooth. Now that we have selected all the edges that we want, uh, you can write over here uh, the radius that you want for those fillets, or you can also write it over here. The program actually helps you a lot if you don't want to do uh, too many steps. Uh, so let's write uh, for this fillet 0 0.2. I don't, yeah, 0 0.2 will be fine. And again, click on OK. So I think that they look good. And we need to do the same thing 
in, in this column. So again, modify, fillet, and let's select the edge and 0 0.2. All right. So now our Lego brick is completed. And let's save it. Just because Lego. I already have a folder, so I'm just gonna save it over there. Okay, do you guys have any questions regarding to to this Lego brick? before we move forward to the next one, hopefully that we have time. Nope, okay. So again, this is gonna, this is being recorded, so this is gonna be available for you later if you want to rewatch it and, and use it. Um, so let's hope that we have time to create the other one. So for the other one, we're going to be designing a, a battle, a beer battle. So let's create a new design. All right. And again, let's create a new component. Standard. And let's call it beer battle. And OK. All right. So first, we need to insert the image. Um, again, with the beer battle, I forgot. Um, we're going to be learning how to insert an image, uh, how to create the fit point spline. We're going to use the Revolve uh, tool. And we are going to go very quick to render so that you can give materials to the battle. Um, the first thing that we need to do is insert the image. You can download any image online, and you can use it as a reference. Uh, so let's click on Insert and Canvas. Uh, I have my image in my computer with here. And the first thing that it's going to ask you is to choose the face that you want it. I need that image in the front of my canvas. So I'm going to click here. So it's the front of my canvas. And it's going to show me the image. And you can scale this image by using your mouse and just keep pressing your mouse and you can make it big or small, but this is not very accurate. Um, so what we are going to do, oh, you can also like change the image if you want to like vertical, vertical or horizontal if you need. Um, so this is not very accurate if you want to give the image uh, a distance or, or a size. So let's make this uh, accurate. Um, so we're going to go to the beer component over here on this side. Oh, let's click on OK. Uh, we're going to go over here to this side, to the beer component that we created. It's where we have the image. We're going to go to Canvas, because the Canvas is holding our image. And we are going to click right-click right, right -click on the image and Calibrate. With the option of Calibrate, it's going to tell us to choose between um, a top and a bottom point. To, to like give the proper size to that bottle. Um, so let's click on the front of our view cube. And the mouse, if you scroll with your mouse, it's going to help you to like zoom in or zoom out. And let's select now those two points. So this is one of my points, the top point, and the bottom point. All right. So now we can give a size to this bottle, the size that, that we need from that bottle. So 
sometimes the images have this white um, taste that we don't need, or that even if we make the image bigger, uh, probably won't have an accurate size. So by just clicking there and collecting those two points, when we give a distance or a dimension to this image, between this point and this point, it's gonna have the the dimension that that, that we want or that we are given. So for this one, uh, we're gonna write 240 millimeters and then click enter. All right. So that's the size that we want for for the bottle. That's the proper size. And now we're gonna start tracing the image. So to trace the image, we're gonna be drawing a line in the center and and then we're gonna be going all around our bottle and use the revolve tool. So to do this, we're gonna uh, use the shortcut in our keyboard, uh, key L for the line. It's gonna tell us uh, to click a plane. So we're gonna click on the front plane and we're gonna create a line in in the middle of the bottle, from the top to the bottom. I'm just gonna try to the dust the middle. Okay, and the bottom. All right. So we have already our middle line, and we need a line over here for the bottom of the bottle. I believe that looks pretty good. So we're gonna click just that line. I know, as you can see, this is rounded over here, and I am not giving that round shape yet uh, because we can do it later. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna click Escape. So overall, we have the center of the bottle, the uh, the bottom of the bottle, and almost the side. So we need to to create this shape over here, and we cannot do it with just a line. So to create that, we're gonna need points, and for those points, we're gonna come to create and point. Now we can start uh, putting points like all over the shape of our bottle. Okay. And it's okay if you are not very perfect putting the points because you can move them later. Let's put this point. Um, okay, one over here. And let's say one here. Okay. So now that you have the point, you need to to join them all to to the lines that you have been creating. And to do that, we're gonna use the spline uh, tool. So to use the spline tool, we're gonna go again and create. And there's an option here, spline, and feed point spline. The feed point spline is gonna help us join all of those points that we created with the lines that we had before. So we're going to just go all over and click all of the points just to join them. And we'll finish here. So to finish, we'll click on this uh, green circle. And don't press K. For for any of this, for any of these points, because you are gonna 
well, they're going to use them to, well, you need to modify them. So if you need to move things, uh, you can move those things. So let's organize all of those points until we are happy with those points. All right. If you click on the point, uh, you get like this, like little tools that will help you uh, modify the way that the curve is made, or you can move the point. Let's see, like over here, probably I need to move this one a little. I'll say that this looks overall. Okay, so now that that all of those are made, uh, we're gonna need to to close this shape. So it's just still open on top of the figure, so over here, and we need to close it. So let's move this top one so, so that it kind of align with this one, and we can close it by selecting the command line over here, or just clicking again uh, in our keyboard, the letter L, and we're gonna click on this point to this point, all right. And now we have a closed, a closed uh, drawing that we can use to create the, the battle shape. So let's go back. So now we're gonna use the revolving tool. And to use the revolving tool, uh, we're gonna click on solid. And we're gonna go to uh, create and revolve. It's going to tell us to select the profile. The profile is what we just created. Uh, the axis is going to be the X axis that we are working on right now, which is uh, this on the side. OK, and And then we need to give an angle. So the angle, wait. So like the profile, okay. And the axis. No. So let me just go back. Um, so again, profile axis over here on the side. So the axis is going to be that middle line that we created. And now it's going to tell us to to give the, the degrees that we want to. Sometimes you don't need to create the whole uh, three, 360 degrees, but you just need like uh, 300. So if you just write 300, it's going to just make this 300 and give you this part open, um, depending on how you need it. For our battle, it's going to be 360. So when we are happy with it, we're just going to click OK. We have the overall of our battle. We're almost there. We're going to finish before six, I promise. Um, we're going to give a fillet in the bottom. So modify fillet. And 
we're gonna just give that field so that it looks like the bottle that we have before. We're gonna click on the button and give it a five millimeters. Then that will be enough. And okay. And now we need to make the bottle hollow. So to, to make the bottle hollow, uh, we already used the the two shell. So we're gonna go to modify. We're gonna go to shell. And we're gonna select the body. And the way that we select the body is coming to body. And we're gonna select all the body for well, it's everything that we're working on, that model. We're gonna give a thickness, and that thickness is gonna be three millimeters inside. If we are happy with that, then click OK. But right now we don't see if if it if we have a shell inside. So if you want to see uh, if this is hollow inside, uh, you can do it very easy by clicking in pen in pet and section analysis. Okay, um, you're gonna need to come here in the left side and click in origin and let's say uh, XD. Okay, so this shows you how this is a cut of that bottle in the internet. So you can see that it's hollow. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is that hole in the top of the bottle. And to do that, we're gonna click the letter C for circle. And we are gonna select the top of that bottle. So that the inside the top. So we can just go to the top of the bottle. And we are gonna come here. We create a circle in the top of the bottle. I'm just making it very quick now because we don't have a lot of time. But when you are happy with the circle, uh, we are going to use the circle. And we are going to extrude the circle. So for some reason, it's not in the place that I want it to be. Well, in any case, it's because we don't have a lot of time. Um, when you want to create that, that hollow piece, uh, you can select that uh, face, or you can even come here. But for some reason, it's not working. Um, and you can use the tool, the extrude tool, and just create a cut. The person reason it's not working right now. Okay. Um, can just show you the next time that we see guys each other. Um, but the last thing that I wanted to show you, at least today, I'm just gonna finish with this. Um, and I want to show you that you can give uh, material to the objects that you that you make here in Fusion, and it's very easy. Uh, so let's go. Let me turn off the analysis tool so that we can see all the bottle. And uh, it's very simple to give material to to any objects that you do or make. You just go to design, and there's an option that says render. So if you click on that option of render, it's, it's going to take this place. You click uh, right, your right click. 
or you can come over here and you can find uh, this tool that is it's called appearance you click on appearance and it's gonna give you all these options they have pre-made um, materials that you can use they have fabric they have class letter etc and you can always find new materials online and load them here if you need to use them um, so for this class we're gonna use uh, probably the bronze so it's more like a beer bottle and just gonna get rid of this one and you can play with several teams here uh, for your appearance if you need to work with um, let's say the scene settings if you need to work with uh, brightness just to give a better uh, appearance to that battle you can do it um, and that's in the render section there's many tools that you can use i'm gonna i'm gonna use this um, however that you want it and if you need to create an image or to capture that image you come here to capture and it's going to create a render it's going to create an image that you can use later if you need to um so this is the end of our p pdh for today um for the other classes i'm going to be bringing other tutorials creating more complex um models uh, to learn new tools. Do you guys have any questions before we go? Okay. So if you don't have any questions, um, I'm very happy that all of you were here. Uh, this is recorded, so you can look at it later if you want to and if you need any help out of these pdhs with pushing 360 i'm in team so you can you can always write me there um so the recording when, when i finish with with the class they'll give me a link and i'll post that link um in team they're going to share those with you and it's going to be also in bright space. So as soon as I know uh, that the recording is ready, they they probably let you know where you can find it. OK. Um, thank you guys again for being here. Uh, I hope to see you the next time. OK. Bye, guys.